Hello? Am I on? Am I the 18th caller? For the Seeger tickets. So I'm not the 18th caller. Superior ops. You mean like a boss? I know just the man. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters. Okay, so for this guy... Wait, what's going on here? Where's the boss we're trying to beat? Uh, I don't know. This guy's in said. Hey, G.I. Joe, who we trying to take down here? Ah, you mean Hitler. Whoa, you can't say that. This is the North American version of the game. Come on, we've all seen the picture. It's clearly Hitler. I don't know. Fluff! Yeah, what is it? Are we trying to kill Hitler in this game? No, no more Fluff facts before class starts. What's the problem, Fluff? The professor keeps bringing me in to share my Fluff facts early, but you know I don't get my full rate until after the intro. Speaking of which, how many hours were on your last pay stub? Don't look at me, I'm direct deposit. Hold on, I might have mine on me. That was rude. What the hell? What a baby. Hello class, and welcome to this Bionic Commando walkthrough here on Video Games 101. By way of Let's Play with Briggins, I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins. The class for Commando is just down the hall, and I'm sorry to say that the class for Battletoads has fallen into enemy hands. Nazi hands, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to get that sorted out. The Nazi connection to this game. Bring in fluff a little bit later, but uh, yeah, that's an Area 20. Bionic Commando is an excellent game for the NES, which revolves around a unique mechanic. There is no jump maneuver in this game. Instead, we have a grappling hook, which we use to get around, connecting to the ceiling and swinging around. This is not the most challenging game on the NES, but I will give it a 6 out of 10, which on the frustration scale equates to biting down and then throwing your controller, particularly in some of the trickier grappling hook sections of the game, which we'll talk about as we get into it. But let's get some context first and find out what is going on here in Bionic Commando. Talk about the person I met when I was young. In 198X, could have been any year in the 80s, we found the Bad's plan, revived the Albatross, which was never put into practice. Drill Force Generalissimo Kilt has seen the plan, and being evil, he decided to execute the plan himself. Don't really have a lot of options when you're evil and you stumble upon a plan to take over the world. You know, your hands are tied at that point. You have to do it. So we lost our hero, Super Joe. So we sent in one man, which is going to be the character which we are controlling. Codenamed Lad. He's cooler than the Super Joe anyway, as you'll find out if you're not familiar with this game. Though I'm assuming you are if you're watching this Bionic Commando walkthrough. So let's start a new game now. You'll see this communication screen, which you'll be very familiar with by the end of the game. Every time we go to a communications room, we can either communicate with our allies or wiretap to kind of eavesdrop on the bad guys. And they're relying on us. High stakes from the get-go. Don't mess this up. Alright, so first we are on the map screen here. This is where we select which area we want to go to. We can transfer to adjacent areas. In this case, 0, 13, or 4. Let's just move up to 13. And that's how that works. Pretty basic. We want to start off on area 1, as you'd expect. So let's head back there. Just narrowly missing that uh, truck there. 
This is the item loadout screen. We don't have anything else to take, so let's just descend. Now let's take a look at the controls for Bionic Commando. We have movement with the D-pad. We can pause it with select. Start uses the item we brought in with us at the start of the mission. Fire the gun with B and use the Bionic Arm with A. And very important also to mention is that A plus B plus start all pressed together lets you leave the mission area and go back to the map screen. So if you ever go into a mission with the wrong items or don't have the items you need, you can get out that way. If you're following along with this Bionic Commando walkthrough though, that will not be an issue. We'll make sure you have the items that you need and go in the areas in the order that you need to do it in. As we take a look at the Briggs notes for Bionic Commando, Number one, get to six health units before the first boss. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Number two, always take the healing item. Blaze will tell you about that. And number three is stock up on continues. We'll show you how to do that in just a bit, but that's what makes this game a lot more manageable. There are a lot of tricky spots in using the grappling hook. A lot of precision necessary there, but the fact that you can basically have unlimited continues in this game makes it much easier in the long run, so. So I recommend getting a firm grasp, no pun intended, on the grappling hook mechanic, as that is where most of the, uh, well, the fun and the challenge of this game lies, is getting around with the grappling hook. There's some tricky areas with pits and spikes and things like that, so a firm understanding of how to use this mechanic pretty well in place of a jump is essential, as you'd expect in this game. There's a communications room to the right, but we don't need to go into it, so we're just going to keep moving to the left here. You'll notice that every enemy leaves behind a bullet when we kill them. Collect these, and at certain thresholds, your max health will go up by one unit. I recommend getting to six units showing on the screen, which means you can take seven hits before you die. And this is the best place to collect them as we jump ahead here. You see these enemies come down two at a time. You can have all the bullets you need in about ten minutes with this uh, technique, but just do that, you'll have enough health for the rest of the game. We have our first boss. Gary? It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters. All right, the commander and reactor. Basically, just fire a crap ton of bullets. Ignore the soldiers for the most part. Uh, if you've done like the professor said, and did a bit of grinding for a few minutes to get your bullet count up and get all that extra health, you'll be in good shape here. Uh, but yeah, just the soldiers are just going to keep coming, so mostly ignore them. Just shoot them when uh, they're getting close to you. Otherwise, focus on concentrating on the reactor itself and you'll take it down the first level. Thank you, Gary. And Blaze, what can you tell us about the energy recovery pills? All right, the energy recovery, kind of a green potion, gets my designation, my award for greatest item in Bionic Commando. Why? It gives you all your health back when you use it. It's single use per level, but the more health you have, the more it's going to give you back as it'll max you out every time. So like the professor said, make sure you have at least six balls of health showing on the screen so you can take seven hits and use this whenever you get low. Top yourself off on demand. Excellent item. I like that they call them pills when it's clearly a potion of some sort, but uh, there you go. Semantics, right? Pills and potions. Flare bombs, all right. Getting a lot of items early on. Blaze, what can you tell us about the flare bombs? All right, the flare bomb, literally only useful in Area 4 to light up the darkness of those caves. Uh, you don't even need it, honestly. You can still see the outlines of the enemies and the spikes. So you can still get around without it. If you want to use it, go ahead, go for it. Uh, otherwise, the energy recovery, not a bad item on that particular level. But again, we're never going to be using it again. So if you just want to check it out, use it. You only have to tap start once. Use it before you even go in the cave. It's still going to work for you. But that's what the flare bombs do. All right, thank you, Blaze. You notice every time we come in contact with one of these trucks on the map, we'll have one of these mini stages here. Pick up these albatrosses, there's two per mini stage. Each one is a continue, so you can very easily stock up on continues since the trucks are limitless. And we can take the flare bombs, like Blaze said. And Blaze, why don't you tell us about the items we're picking up throughout the course of this game? 
All right, throughout the course of some of these levels, you're going to find supply drops from your allies. Now, there are only about four things which can come out of these parachuting supply packs. We can have a one-up doll, which gives us an extra life. You can get an energy recovery, which is very similar to the energy recovery on-demand item you can use, except this tops you off as soon as you pick it up. You have the POW, which is sort of a shield, which floats around you and does damage to enemies. Not all that effective, if you ask me. And then sometimes you'll get a single bullet, which goes toward your full bullet count, which gives you more life overall at certain thresholds. Yeah, speaking of which, I should mention the reason I recommend getting to seven health units overall is because the spikes do three damage points to you every time you hit them. So if you have seven units of health, that means you can hit the spikes twice without dying at full health. So just something to keep in mind as we have another boss, Gary. Boss beaters. All right, strategy for the wired gunner, just ignore him, all right? Uh, he can't actually hurt you with his grappling hook, just like you can't hurt people with your grappling hook. So just ignore him, stay on that platform, keep firing at the reactor. Uh, if he knocks you back, just reposition yourself, swing back into place, and uh, just take out the reactor, and he'll die with it. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, the bosses in this game, quote-unquote bosses, are not difficult in the least. We have a new gun now, the Wide Cannon. I always recommend taking the, the latest gun that they give you in the next section of the game. Uh, sometimes they're necessary for knocking down barriers and things like that. As we head into our second neutral area. And, <laughs> the guy from the intro here. Mr. Kilt. I think it would be more of a, he would say his rank before he would say Mr. Kilt, but... You know what, let's end this war right here, right now. Just, just shoot him. Alright. So every time you fire your weapon in a neutral area, all hell breaks loose. Really doesn't matter, though. It's just a bunch of random soldiers. Try to suppress the urge to fire your weapon until you're about to leave the neutral area. That's what I always like to do. I think we have another item here. Yeah, Blaze? All right, there are four communicators in Bionic Commando. We start off with the Alpha, then we will get the Delta, which is brown, then we'll get the Beta, which is green, and finally the Gamma, which is blue. The order is kind of tricky. You think you want to use them in the order which you collect them, but instead we're going to save that brown Delta communicator for the final three areas, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to ride that Alpha through 1, 4, and 5, the beta, the green one, is for 2, 3, and 6. And the gamma, which is the blue communicators, for areas 7, 8, and 9. Make sure you have the right communicator equipped for each of these areas. Otherwise, you will not be able to communicate or wiretap in the communication rooms. Thank you, Blaze. It's worth mentioning that you literally never have to select the wiretapping option. That's more for fun, and sometimes you'll get some funny responses as you're eavesdropping on the enemy, uh, but good rule of thumb is to enter every communications room you find and select the communicate option to get in touch with your allies. In some cases, this is the only way to open up otherwise locked doors to the enemy or the boss in certain levels, so. Good rule for connecting to, uh, to these lights or whatever these are is to aim for the middle as this will once you pull yourself up, this will put you in the middle of the surface, which you're going to be sliding off of. So, uh, give yourself more time, basically, to get up to the next area before you slide off. In some cases, you want to be on the far side if you need to make a connection immediately after. We'll find that in, I think it might be the next level or the one after that, so we'll talk about that there. But right here, we want to kind of aim for the middle just to give ourselves more time to make the next move. Are you from the Federation? I'm a spy for the Federation. I like that. <laughs> Maybe verify before you start throwing that out, revealing that information. It's like, no, I'm with the Imperial forces, and now we're going to kill you. Not the brightest of uh, individuals working with us here with the, the Federation. Thank goodness they have land, that's all I can say. 
You'll notice if we hit an enemy with the grappling hook, it doesn't do any damage, it just kind of bounces them back. So we're having a little bit of trouble here. This will bounce you generally in the direction that you're facing, with some exceptions. And we're finally at the boss, Gary. Boss beaters! Alright, the PPP robot. Uh, basically, just go behind it to the right, on the ground level, and shoot it when it drops down. It just goes up and down. You can take it down when it drops down, just shoot it, destroy it, and the reactor will be completely unguarded at that point. So just fire away. Yeah, not the best security system. I was just trashing the Federation. The Imperial Force is not that much brighter if they're investing a lot of their money into that kind of technology. We got the rocket launcher, which is my favorite weapon in the game. Unfortunately, we can only use it for a handful of missions. We're gonna head to neutral area 16 now. Unfortunately, we don't get to use the rocket launcher for all that long, just a handful of missions until we get something something else, which is not better, but it's the most powerful weapon in the game. You'll notice you can fire a shot in the neutral area to the left of that first guy, but once you pass him and you fire your weapon, that's when, again, all hell breaks loose. By the way, you'll notice these neutral areas get progressively more dangerous. They have a little drone there that can do actual damage to us, but if we try to defend ourselves, that's breaking the treaty. I don't get that, but... Don't be hasty. Advance with caution. I remember not to pat ourselves here on Video Games 101 on the back too hard, but uh, I remember I had a comparatively crappy and cheesy game player's tape series on VHS when I was a kid, and uh, they would give kind of generic tips and overviews on games like this, and they did cover this game. And I remember the narrator saying, when he gives that line, the guy saying, don't be hasty, advance with caution. He says, don't underestimate this advice. Something about it'll prove invaluable later. It never comes up again. It really is useless. But I digress. Let's make it a point to take our green communicator here, otherwise we'll not be able to get in touch with our allies. Another piece of advice from that game tape series, ride the blobs of slime, but only if they take you where you want to go. Great advice. We will need to ride them in just a moment. We'll find when the chain's down, we cannot uh, attack a little crane, so mostly just avoid these unless we're behind them. When I think of the wide cannon, I think of the next gun we're going to get, the poorly named three-way. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, we'll need our rocket launcher in these next areas. I'll admit it doesn't have the range that some of the other weapons have, but it is the most powerful, so it's a shame we don't get to use it a bit more takes down most reactors in about three or four hits here. And I'm not going to bring back in Gary, as this is just kind of a rehash of a quote-unquote boss we've already seen. You don't even need to worry with any soldiers. Again, three, four, five shots from the rocket launcher. And it seems to vary, but that will always take down a reactor, five at the most. What did we get this time? The Pendant. Blaze? All right, the cross-shaped pendant protects you from the first shot you take in every level. After that, it's useless, but if you want to stave off that first shot, no matter where it lands on you, the pendant will protect you. Not a bad item to automatically have equipped until you get something better. Capcom always trying to force their religious views on their players. I'm joking. But uh, mine, the looks more like Elmer's glue, but I guess it's quicksand there. Something every kid could relate to, or at least have an awareness of in the late 80s. 
in every cartoon they watch. So watch out for these giant Venus flytrap things. If they, uh, if they manage to chomp down on you, they will kill you with one hit, so just quickly move like we did there. Drop down to save some time here, and in this case, I think this is one of those communication rooms where they're gonna, yeah, literally open the door for us, so need to make sure we hit this one. So we're gonna have our first truly challenging swinging section coming up here. This is where it's good to have those healing pills slash potion handy. Get ready to tap that start button if you fall on any of these, but it's a tricky little area to, with some precision swinging necessary. Another PPP robot. This time we have the gun to take it down. You don't even have to avoid it. Just give it one shot and it'll destroy it, leaving the reactor undefended and destroyed just like that. Let's see if we get another new item here. Rapid fire. Blaze? Rapid fire device is essentially turbo. Uh, if you're using turbo anyway, it's kind of a moot point. Just stick with the energy recovery. It's not worth it. Again, energy recovery, item of the game. Don't waste your time with anything else. This is one of my favorite levels. I like the, the nighttime theme. Also, it's just one of the best themes. I know musically, I know we got to hear this one earlier, but... That 1-up is tricky to get, by the way. I don't recommend going for it. Generally don't need it either with all the unlimited continues. This probably has the most challenging swinging section in the game. This is the level that I was referring to earlier when I was saying you want to get as far, in this case, to the right as you possibly can on each of these swings, you can see here. Otherwise, you'll come too shallow and you'll kind of slide off on the left side of one of those circles. And we have one more tricky section here. Let's get as far right as we can. And just like that, grab this last one. And that part is behind us now. This part's a little tricky too. We're gonna have a non-stop onslaught of these little spiked balls coming at you. So you wanna be careful to attach yourself to the ceiling to avoid them as they pass underneath you. We can shoot the guys that are hurling these things at us after we clear a few. Again, good point to have your healing pills primed and ready to go. Use mine here. If you have this much health to burn, you don't have to be quite as careful here, which is another good reason to do that grinding at the start. A little, little looser. We're taking, admittedly, a lot of damage here just by, just because we can, essentially. Alright, I think we have a unique boss here, Gary. Boss beaters! Alright, the giant soldier. This is one of the more challenging enemies. Uh, basically, you want to suspend yourself then drop and fire, timing it so that it hits just when the soldier moves towards you. Uh, so he'll be moving on and off screen if you're in the right position like we have in the video here. And you just want to drop down and fire just as you drop down to hit him in the face. A few of these shots with the rocket launcher will take him down. And there it is, in the face. And three to four hits with the rocket launcher. Another area cleared, and another item, I believe. Blaze? All right, the permit, we need this. Another single-use item to get into the neutral area 14. So make sure you equip that before you go in. And just as importantly, when you're going to the next area after that, make sure you have your health, energy recovery equipped once again. Yeah, another one of those items which literally only has a single level of use here can't get in without the permits, make sure you equip that. And he's got the blue communicator for us this time. Again, this is a neutral area. Why is it okay for the Imperial forces to set up all these booby traps, just trying to bait us into firing our gun, basically? I didn't mention this before, but you can talk to these NPCs by tapping up when you're on top of them. Some of them automatically talk to you. Most of the ones that you need to talk to 
will just automatically engage like that, but you can have some more sometimes interesting conversations with people by doing that. So we're going to head to Area 8 now. Major connecting area. This is one of the longer levels. And even without trying to stock on these uh, continues, we've already probably got six, maybe eight at the end of this bonus level here. Rocket launcher is really great on this level. The next weapon we're going to get, again, the unfortunately called named uh, three-way, does not do as much damage as the rocket launcher. We're going to go back to our pills, and we're going to take the blue communicator with us this time. This is one of the larger and less linear levels that we've encountered, so I recommend following along with the route that we take. And while we're doing that, how about we get our first fluff fact of the day? First of all, let's address the big old swastika-shaped elephant in the room. The bad guys in this game, and in general I think you'll agree with, and join me in saying, Professor, are Nazis. Yes, Nazis are bad. That is the official stance of Let's Play with Brigands. Yeah. Anyway, between Nintendo's strict censorship policies and a West German law prohibiting the showing of Nazi imagery, virtually all connections between the game's bad guys and the Nazi party were scrubbed. This meant that the many swastikas of the game were replaced by the symbol of a bird, and the Nazis were rather uncleverly renamed the Bads. Most obviously, the title in Japan, Hitler no Futatsu, Top Secret, which translates to the resurrection of Hitler, was changed to Bionic Commando. So, just to be clear, Nintendo of Japan, the country that was literally allies with Germany during World War II, was down with allowing the player to kill Nazis in their version. But then Nintendo of America, a country who fought to defeat the Nazis in the Second World War, didn't want to show them being killed, and even went so far as to replace their evil symbol of the swastika with one which could be misconstrued as an eagle. Yeah. Just checking. Thank you very much, Fluff. Alright, so... Here we can literally just walk onto this platform. A lot safer than having to grapnel across to it. There goes some energy recovery pills in liquid form, mind you. Now in liquid form. So this is an area where they don't expressly say that a door to the boss has been opened, but unless you go into I think it's just this communications room, maybe it's the other one on top of it, but unless you do that, this door right here to the boss will not be open, so you probably just need to know where they've taken Super Joe so you know where to go next, essentially, but... And we can almost certainly destroy the main system. We have a rocket launcher. And, uh... Yeah, again, we just ignore it. I like that one shot from the rocket launcher can go through an enemy and still hit the reactor behind them, but what do we get this time? The Iron Boots, please? All right, the Iron Boots allow you to kill enemies while swinging with your grappling hook back and forth. Uh, not a bad item, but not nearly as useful as the energy recovery. Nothing can make me replace that, so it's a cool idea, but again, I'm sticking with the energy recovery for this tier, so I recommend you do the same. All right, make sure you swing right there before you drop down a couple steps, otherwise you won't be able to reach where you can grapple onto to get that one up. These guys are tricky, at least compared to some of the other enemies in this game. Ah, fell down there. Uh, whereas you want to kind of bait them. We had them in the last area, but yeah, you kind of have to bait them to drop down, so just go to the opposite area that they're on and then fire as you're dropping. Straightforward enough. So we get to ride some carts here in this next section. It says we need to come to Area 7, but I know the hidden area that he's talking about. We'll find out where this is, I think, in the next neutral area, actually. And uh, it allows us to gain access to uh, one of the items of the game. 
it's not even necessary to beat the game, but uh, obviously we'll show that to you when the time comes. So we are here at the next boss. And that must be a glitch. I kind of like that pattern though. <laughs> Above and on the sides of the screen there. Again, with the rocket launcher, we make short work of these areas. I noticed we picked up another uh, another health unit at some point. Every time you die, I think the number of bullets you have gets halved to the next, the lowest tier or something like that. And there it is, there's the three-way. We're literally taking a step backwards in terms of the guns of this game with the three-way. All under the guise that, you know, it's better because it uh, has a bit more reach, but... All it does is shoot above and below you at the same time. But unfortunately, we do need to take this moving forward to kind of break through some barriers to the, the next section. Got a little boy now? What? Talk sense. Underground paths run between. All right, so that's where we find out the hidden area, basically. I guess we have a prisoner of war in that guy, and he finally talked. I don't know why the neutral areas all have spikes in these rooms. Seems a little odd, but... Considering how neutral they're meant to be, they seem to be awful dangerous. So now we know Super Joe is in Area 7. Maybe we'll finally catch up to him there. But let's go ahead and transfer in this new path that we didn't have before since we had that intel. And this is very much like the other top-down areas of this game. Just it's more of a bunker. And we get more continues here, but there will be an item at the end of this. So, Blaze? General Max, lucky helmet. So important, so hidden away tucked between those two areas. This will protect you from the first three bullets which hit Lad. Obviously an upgrade over the pendant, so go ahead and equip it as soon as you get it. Yeah, it's an upgrade over the pendant, that's for sure. So really, in this case, it was just a matter of what did I think was faster, going back this way or going the, uh, the other way. Probably run into some trucks that way, so probably end up being the same time either way, who knows. So we're gonna go to Area 7 next to try to finally rescue Super Joe. You'll see eventually they just run out of items to give us at the ends of levels, so they just start giving us bullets or a one-up and things like that, so... If you haven't died, you'll almost certainly have increased your max health count by now. Just a little extra cushing, a little extra padding, basically. This is where we need that three-way from the start. We'll equip that helmet. Otherwise, keep the health pills on and the blue communicator for at least one last level here. We have a bit more uh, tricky swinging in this section. So that's our first bullet that we've taken. Should clarify, yeah, it's just bullets that it protects you against the first three. If you run into an enemy or something like that, it will still hurt you, so. So while we do some tricky swinging up ahead, let's bring in Fluff for another fact. Now, Fluff, I noticed earlier you said that virtually all references to the Nazis were scrubbed, so that suggests to me that they left something in? Yep. The game's leader of the Nazis, er, the Bads, was renamed Master D. But the original character art from the Japanese version was kept in. So anyone who attended a history class in the last three quarters of a century will instantly recognize Adolf Hitler. I'm still wondering, given how vigorously they policed everything else Nazi-related in this game, how this went unnoticed. Now, oh, to be fair on them, pictures of Hitler were quite hard to come by in the 1980s. Speaking of Nintendo of America's policies on acceptable content, maybe the biggest head-scratcher in this entire game is the inclusion of the incredibly graphic death scene which Hitler experiences at the end of the game. Jeez, Fluff, spoilers much? Oh, you're right. Sorry, class, maybe you don't get to kill the last boss in this Nintendo game from the late 80s. 
We've been working together for a while now. I can always tell when Fluff's being sarcastic. But anyway, we finally rescued Super Joe. Fifteen areas later, something like that. You can see we look a million times cooler than Mr. Joe. I want him to correct us. That's Super Joe. I didn't kill thousands of Nazis to be called a mister. A huge laser cannon. That doesn't sound good. Something that always bothered me about this part was the fact that uh, they have that same, like, we're experiencing connectivity issues when we're having a conversation literally two feet from each other. I think they could have dispensed with that mechanic just, you know, for this one section at least. Destroyer 3. You do need to remember that. Not that it's that hard to remember, but... So we'll head to Area 18 now. We're gonna help Super Joe. Defeat the bads, by which I mean we're gonna do all the work. So the next communicator we're going to need is the brown one. You don't need it for these neutral areas, but just something to keep in mind. You can talk to uh, the guys outside of these rooms. I think that guy's name is Destroyer 1 or 2. Again, we need Destroyer 3. The guy on the left is 1 or 2. This is 3. So talk to this guy. Say yes. Be like, I would prefer, actually, if I could just... Maybe we could beef up my... Uh, there we go. Looks like a little hunting rifle. We just beef up our rocket launcher to fire like the uh, rifle. We really are going backwards in terms of effectiveness of the uh, weapons. Doesn't make any sense, but... Is what it is. That should be kind of fun to use this on these screens because of the spread that it gives you. A little walking armada now. We have, what, five guns? Rocket launcher, three-way. The spread shot, which could also be called a three-way, really. Rifle. And just for completionist's sake, we'll go to Area 19, even though I don't think there's much here for us. We're literally only missing one more item, and that's going to be uh, in the penultimate level. Here they literally, like, just completely given up the, uh, the hoax of this being a neutral area when we're this close and just have enemies attacking us with no repercussions. Then we try to defend ourselves and all these neutral guys who are clearly on the payroll for the bads come after us. Okay. Give him time and he'll throw some grenades at you. I don't like to give him time. All right, so now we're gonna head to the final three areas of this game. Some of the most challenging. Certainly the most challenging swinging section is coming up. Really wish you had the option of skipping these truck levels at this point. The annoying thing is it always takes our helicopter like an extra second to take off for some reason, and in that time the trucks always catch up to us, so it's annoying. It's worth mentioning, again, this is a step down from that rocket launcher now, dudes are taking multiple shots, but whatever. It is worth mentioning that you just keep going with the, uh, the bullets if you just want to keep upping your health. Obviously there at the beginning of the game. Make sure you have the brown communicator here, obviously. Um, but, uh, again. Seven hits is a pretty good spot. You'll certainly need them for these later areas. When things like flames and spikes are doing extra damage if you don't land all of your swinging just right. This area's a little tricky. You gotta... I like to pull it in tight there, and then when you swing off to the right, that's when you, uh... Pull yourself back up. Bit more slime here. 
This is where we literally need this particular blob of slime, so make sure you don't scroll it off the screen. Otherwise, you'll have to go back up and just crouch, wait for it, and uh, carry on through underneath the spikes there. Alright, so a very good tip here, once we come out of this communications room, is to immediately start moving left, and then swing to the left. There's going to be some spikes below you, and uh, there's going to be a platform. But as you'll see right here, just start moving left and swing, and then you'll drop timing-wise right on that platform. Otherwise, it gets a bit tricky trying to figure out the timing of it. So I've just found that's the safest and simplest way to do that section. And now while we have a little bit of downtime, up to our ears and drones. Fluff, how about you give us another fluff fact, but could you give us one not about Nazis this time? Happy to. So, like many NES games from the 1980s, Bionic Commando was originally an arcade game, which was kind of a spiritual successor to Capcom's earlier arcade and NES port, Commando. Unlike most ports of the NES, though, the Bionic Commando as we know it on the NES was quite a bit different from its arcade origins. By comparison, the arcade version was more linear and repetitive and didn't have the complexities of items, communications, neutral areas, and the ongoing plot. Yeah, that does have more of a look of a by-the-numbers arcade game. Yep, and speaking of Commando, the top-down perspective levels in Bionic Commando on the NES have the same look and feel of the gameplay and visuals of the original Commando. The character the player controls in Commando is named Super Joe. The same character you're out to save here. Speaking of which, I updated the saving character trope list for you. Good luck, Fluff. Yeah, probably the most refreshing spin we've had on it so far, but we're still out to rescue someone in this one. Right, another very tricky sequence of swinging. I think the key that I'm showing right here is not to get too greedy with uh, going for the long grapple. Just when it tends to get too tight and you don't have as much room to operate, it gets uh, a bit trickier to maintain a connection without getting like just stuck on the top basically and then you can't swing. So uh, just kind of find that happy medium between too far and too short basically with your grapple length here. One more communications room before we go into the Probably trickiest part of the swinging of this level. Bazooka? Yeah, I got a bazooka. <laughs> Let me handle the rest. By that I mean you do everything. I will do nothing. Thanks, Hal. Alright, so yeah, starting from this part we have to keep going up. We're not even done yet. We got one more section here. And there you go. In that area, if you uh, fall, you're kind of out of luck in terms of like healing yourself. There's nowhere to recover from, so you just have to do it over with a fresh life if you die there, obviously. And this gun will make you miss for the, the old days of your rocket launcher where it just took three hits. That takes a bit longer with that, but we get it done. And the final new item, Blaze. All right, the bulletproof vest will block every other bullet which hits lad. So you kind of got to do the math uh, basically between that and the helmet at this point. Uh, I would say that the bulletproof vest is the better investment if you think you're going to be taking more than three hits. So go ahead, equip that. Again, you're going to have this at the very end of the game, so really it's only applicable for that last level or so. But uh, again, I recommend the bulletproof vest over the helmet. Yeah, just crunch the numbers, and the bulletproof vest tends to come out ahead there. And here we are on the final level here in Bionic Commando. So we need to take out a kind of miniature reactor before we can proceed. So, I like to drop down all the way here. Head into this room. I like working from the bottom and going up to the top here. Here we need to pull ourselves up as close to the reactor as possible and then put as many bullets in as you can before the bullets will knock you down. 
sometimes you find that sweet spot where the bullets hit you or not your grappling arm so that you don't get knocked down. And just time that so you don't get shocked by the little bolts there. It's like something out of uh, Mario 2, almost. And we can talk to Joe here. I like that he calls himself Super Joe. It's a bit... I don't know, I guess he's earned it. If you wiretap there, you can hear the enemies crapping their pants at uh, Super Joe. Approaching. I'd be more worried about us if I were them, but uh, whatever. Alright, one more reactor to take down. This one's not as convenient. We need to go down. So you can't burn through this one quite as quickly. This is a fake boss room, by the way. There's a generator in there, but uh, it doesn't do anything, basically. It's a, it's a dud. You can't even attack it. So, don't waste your life trying to figure that out. Just head all the way down to the real boss room and knock this out. And you know what? Before we close things out here, let's get one final fluff fact. Maybe something about the grappling mechanic itself, Fluff. Planet Commando's director, Takoro Fujiwara, designed a 1983 arcade game named Rock and Rope, which featured moving around the platform-based levels using a wire. He wanted to expand on this mechanic and was able to finally do so in Bionic Commando. The ability to swing around and use a grappling mechanic has been replicated in many games since then, like Earthworm Jim and the games in the Tomb Raider series. Good games. Thank you, Fluff. Maybe this is the communication room where you hear the officer crapping their pants. Oh, just Joe this time. Maybe you heard my... my critique. All right, kill the leader and get out while he just sets some bombs. Let's check. I think this might be the one. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure that guy's dead. And if he's not now, he will be. All right, so this is one final tricky kind of grappling area. In that uh, we have a very low ceiling and lots of spikes. So hopefully you've gotten pretty good at this mechanic by now. I shot this guy in one of the early neutral areas. The kid? Come on. Got a cocky face. Look at that smirk. Oh, good. It's probably in the world's best interest that Hitler doesn't. Oh, no. Just like that, Kilt's dead. Underwhelming. I was looking forward to shooting him in the face. Yeah, that's Hitler. <laughs> Take over our army. Cocky Nazi bastard. Alright, final boss, Gary. Boss beaters. Are the Albatross is easily the hardest boss in the game, but it's still not that hard. Uh, so you want to hook to the middle of the second to last jet from the right as soon as it appears on the right, because the Albatross will keep moving left and right, back and forth. Uh, you want to pull up as soon as possible on that jet and then attach to the piece above it and pull up. Do this as quickly as you can to maximize the time that you have because it will drop you off once it goes too far to the right. Then, once you're up there, just keep shooting to the right and uh, you want to hit that orange glowing flame bit right there and uh, basically just rinse and repeat. Watch out for the flames as they come out of the jets, but again, not really a difficult battle, just it can get a little bit of a hassle just repeating this process, but that's the best way to do it. Well, thank you very much, Gary. Excellent work today, and here's Hal. Oh no, they got Hal. Alright, this is a very tricky time-based thing here. You only get one shot at it. This is what it looks like. Shoot the cockpit window right there as you're dropping down. It helps if you've done it before, but this is pretty cool. 
And yeah, explain how that passed Nintendo's standards and practices. At least, Nintendo of America. Pretty graphic as far as NES games go. Satisfying nonetheless. Famous line right there, the bass will explode in 60 seconds. Is that as dangerous as exploding in 60 seconds? I don't know. But uh, let's not take that chance. We have one last giant soldier to deal with here. It's a better bet just to uh, take him down, basically, if you have the health. I mean, if you don't have the health, he's probably going to kill you, but uh, yeah, it's a lot easier to get past this part. I don't know why we got rid of the bazooka all of a sudden. Why would you toss that away? That would have probably taken him down with one hit, but once you do that, just grapple accordingly, and there you go. Let's enjoy the Bionic Commando ending here. Yeah, we're not calling him Super Joe anymore. Not after we've done all the work. Very impatient. Guess we owe our lives to this guy who bought us a couple more seconds, basically. One of the coolest endings, I have to say, on the NES. System whose library wasn't known for... How about that explosion? That might be the best explosion on the NES. But yeah, system that's not known for its great endings. This is one of the best. I like that little piece there too, that's a good bit of music. Nineteen eighty nine, April seventh. Heck yeah. All of whom did virtually nothing. The one-man army. Got it done this time. Excellent game, though. And we do have a little stinger at the end, if you will. A little postscript on the ending here, which is... poignant. Because I'll mention now, just uh, remember to receive full credit for this class, to... God damn it. All right. To uh, like and comment on this particular video. Subscribe if you haven't. We put up a new class every Monday morning, 9 a.m. And I always thought this was a nice touch here. Now so much time has elapsed and I'm old now. I think it's time for me to tell you the whole story. I hope this story will be told for a long time. August 2nd, 2010. There it is, Super Joe. Anyway, thank you one last time for attending this class. Thank you to all my teaching assistants today who did an excellent job. I'll see you next week in the same spot for our next class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.